I think we should all honor Bill Lutz for the Cardinals. Uh, <laughs> what, three seconds left in the game? Immaculate yes. reception. All right. Good evening and welcome to this meeting of Troy City Council for Monday, November 16th at 7 o'clock. I will always yield the floor for comments about the Arizona Cardinals. At this point, let's stand for our invocation. Of Heavenly Father, in this season, let our hearts be filled with gratitude. Gratitude for the wonderful community we live in. We're grateful for the generosity of our friends and for our neighbors. And Lord, as we do our work tonight here on City Council, have our hearts filled with joy and compassion for all our residents. Lord, we're grateful for those that serve our community around the clock every day, our police officers, our firefighters, our trash collectors, those in the water department, the water uh, sewer collection department, all of our workers that work hard to serve our residents. Lord, we are grateful eternally. And we pray this in the name of your son. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This is Knightley. Please call the roll. Mr. Allen. Here. Mrs. Lee. Here. Mr. Rosal? Here. Mr. Twilliger? Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Siebert? Here. Mr. Twist? Here. Mr. Schilling? Here. Mr. Swager? Here. All members are present. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Tonight, we are excited to have three public hearings on our agenda. The first public hearing is on Ordinance 049-2020. I'll ask Mrs. Knight to please read the ordinance. <clears throat> Ordinance changing the zoning of parcel D0800-1930 located in the city of Troy from the zoning classification of B3 Central Business District to OR1 Office Residence District. This is located at 121 West Franklin. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. If you wish to speak on the ordinance, now is the time to do it. Please come forward, give your name and address, and take as much time as you wish. Seeing no one coming forward, we'll declare the public hearing on Ordinance 049-2020 closed. And we will commence with the public hearing for Ordinance 050-2020. Mrs. Knight, will you please read the ordinance? Ordinance number 050-2020 and ordinance changing the zoning of parcel B08-00-1937 in the city of Troy from the zoning classification of B3 to OR1 Office Residence District located at 25 South Plum Street. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. If you wish to speak on the ordinance, now is your time to do so. Please come to the microphone, give your name and address, and take as much time as you wish. Is there anyone wishing to speak for or against the ordinance? Seeing none, we will declare the public hearing for Ordinance 050-2020 closed, and we will begin with the public hearing for Ordinance 051-2020. This is night. Will you please read the ordinance? Ordinance number 051-2020, ordinance change in zone, zoning of parcel B08-001940 from the zoning classification of B3 to OR1 Office Residence District located at 21 South Plum Street. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. If anyone wishes to speak on ordinance 051-2020, now's the time to do so. Please come to the microphone, give your name and address, and take as much time as you wish. If there's anyone wishing to speak for or against the ordinance. Seeing no one, we will declare the public hearing on Ordinance 051-2020 closed. This is night. We please read a summary of the minutes of the November 2nd, 2020 meeting of Troy City Council. Minutes of Council, November 2, 2020. Committee report, personnel committee reported regarding the position of office manager at the Hobart Arena and recommended that the legislation be prepared, placing the position and the ordinance covering FSLA exempt employees. <coughs> the sidewalks committee reported regarding the Riverside Drive Improvement Project. Phases three and four recommended legislation be prepared, authorizing the bidding of the project at two million dollars, and also authorize additional items to be handled for that project. 
resolution number R63-2020 did and advertised for the Riverside Drive Improvement Project phases three and four first reading and adopted. Resolution number R64-2020 authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety to take other actions relating to the Riverside Drive Improvement Project phases three and four was given the first type of reading and was adopted. Ordinance number 047-2020, fixing salaries and wages, amending the ordinance related to the office manager position, first reading and adopted. Ordinance 048-2020, amending salary ordinance regarding the office manager position at Hobart Arena for FSLA exempt ordinance was given first reading and adopted. Ordinance number 049-2020, a rezoning regarding 121 West Franklin Street was given first reading. Ordinance number 050-2020, a rezoning regarding the property at 25 South Plum Street was given first reading. Ordinance number 051 2020 regarding the rezoning of the property at 21 South Plum Street was given first title reading. Following comments, council adjourned at 7 19 p.m. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. House council wish to move on the item. Move the minutes be accepted. Second. It has been moved to approve the minutes by Mr. Seward, second by Mr. Twist. Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Snead? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Approved. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. We have six committee reports from four different committees tonight. We will begin with the Community Partnerships Committee and Mr. Roselle. Mr. Roselle, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On November 12th, the committee <clears throat> met regarding the quest, request of Troy Community Works, TCW, that a $14,300 tap-in <clears throat> be waived associated with the TCW renovating the building at 1-3 East Main Street. The project is nearing completion, but, <clears throat> but there have been additional costs primarily related to compliance with the State Historic Preservation Office for historic tax credits. Other additional costs are associated with the utility demand and renovating all three floors of the building, which it was required when city council approved a $1 million CDBG grant. Waiving the tap-in fee is one element the owners believe assure the completion of the renovation. It is the recommendation of this committee, the legislation be prepared authorizing the director of public <clears throat> service and safety to waive the tap-in fee paid by the Troy Community Works for the building at 1-3 East Main Street in an amount not to exceed $14,300. This committee supports emergency legisla legislation so that the project completion is not delayed. Respectfully submitted, Zach Allen, John Schwazer, and myself as chairman. Thank you, Mr. Rosell. Do any uh, council members have any comments or questions on this committee report? Seeing none, Mr. Rosell, please uh, thank, you for, thank you for your report this evening. We'll go to the personnel committee and Mr. Twist. Thank you, Mr. President. This committee met November 9th regarding the hourly wage for part-time and seasonal workers. It is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared to be effective January 1st, 2021, to amend the hourly rate for seasonal part-time employees to reflect a starting hourly wage of $8.80 per hour. That's respectfully submitted by Zach Allen, Todd Siebert, and myself as chair. Thank you, Mr. Twist. Do any council members have any comments or questions on this report? Seeing none, we'll move to the Parks and Recreation Committee. We have two reports. Uh, Mr. Schilling, the floor is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> this committee met November 9th to further discuss the recommendation of the Board of Park Commissioners to enact a smoking ban at public parks. The board provided information that their recommendation covered all public park areas recommendation based on the difficulty of enforcing such a ban and with no information that smoking at public parks is an issue it is a recommendation of this committee that no legislative action be taken in response to the board's recommendation for smoking ban at public parks should this matter become an issue in the future it could be reviewed and at that time reconsidered respectfully submitted uh mr phillips mr twilliger and myself as chairman Thank you, Mr. Schilling. Do any council members have any comments or questions on this report? Seeing none, you can continue, Mr. Schilling. Thank you. Uh, this committee met on November 9th regarding the recommendation of the Board of Park Commissioners that a small portion of Edgewater Park 
where an encroachment into the park exists to be declared a surplus and offered for sale. The recommendation was forward in accordance with the new policy guidelines, reapproval of declaring a surplus city board of park commissioners property. The committee supports, <clears throat> the, committee supports the recommendations of the park commissioners and recommends that legislation be prepared declaring a surplus and serving no public purpose as an approximate 10 foot strip to the rear of 2854 Amberwood Drive and that the land then be offered for sale. We note that legislation will not be submitted until a survey has been completed and a plat map prepared and approved. This is respectively submitted by Mr. Phillips, Mr. Twilliger and myself as chairman. Thank you, Mr. Schilling. Do any council members have any comments or questions on this report? We'll move on to the last committee of the night, safety and health with Mr. Terwilliger. Mr. Terwilliger, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. This committee met November 9th regarding the status of the COVID-19 pandemic, noting that cases are increasing. The current deadline ends December 1st related to holding electronic or remote meetings due to the state of emergency declared as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Extending the deadline will provide communities with the flexibility needed to protect the safety of meeting participants and the public. It is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared encouraging the governor and the state legislation legislators to extend the deadline for uh, operating, operating public meetings electronically until the COVID-19 state of emergency is list, lifted. As the current deadline, December 1st, deadline is quickly approaching, the committee supports emergency legislation on this activity. This is respectfully submitted by Mr. Roselle, Mr. Schilling, and myself, Mr. Twilliger as chair. Thank you, Mr. Twilliger. Do any council members have any comments or questions on this item? Mr. Twilliger, you can finish up. Thank you. This committee again met on November 9th to discuss the 2021 funding of the Miami County Health District. Troy's funding is based on the millage equivalents as paid by 22 of the 24 political subdivisions in the county for public health services. Troy's payment is funded from the general fund. The 2021 funding would be $383,184.97, an increase of approximately 4.6% uh, over 2020 funding. It is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared to approve the 2021 funding to the Miami County Health District for public health services for Troy residents in the amount of $383,184.97. This is respectfully submitted by Mr. Roselle, Mr. Schilling, and myself as chair. Thank you, Mr. Twilliger. Do any council members have any comments or questions on that report? Seeing none, we open up for uh, citizen comments on any of the items on the agenda. If you wish to speak on any of the resolutions or ordinances that will be discussed this evening, please come to the podium, give your name and address, and you have two minutes to address council. Mr. Kerber will be our timekeeper. Uh, good evening. My name is Christy Shell. I live at um, 1205 uh, Post Crest Drive. Too many addresses. <laughs> Um, in uh, Troy, Ohio. I am the president of Troy Community Works and have spoken to many of you prior. Um, just um, want, appreciated the recommendation from the committee to accept um, waiving of the fees for um, our top end fees for the building. Um, I just wanted to offer the opportunity to say that um, we, as a, feel like as a partner of Troy, that we. Um, have been very dedicated as a, a group of volunteers to continue this work for the community. And we are, are clearly at a risk of having to stop construction because we have the overages that we've heard. Um, 
we had had over eighty thousand dollars in um, reserve for these type of things, but in a hundred sixty-five year old building, there are more issues than one can even imagine. <laughs> and so, um, as we move forward, we're hoping that the council will continue to support um, our work in trying to develop the downtown and the square for the city. So, this is this was all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any other residents have any comments or questions uh, about any of the agenda items? Seeing none, we'll move into resolutions. This is night. Will you please read resolution R65 2020? Resolution number R65 2020. Resolution authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio, to enter into an agreement with the Miami County General Health District for Health Services. This would be for 2021, the city's contribution, $383,184.97, first reading. How's council wish to act on the item? Move for suspension. Second. It's been moved to suspend the three-year rule by Mr. Phillips, seconded by Mr. Twist. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Sneed? Yes. Mr. Second. The three year rule has been suspended. It's been moved to adopt the resolution by Mrs. Sneed, seconded by Mr. Twist. This is, uh, any comments or questions on the item? Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Sneed? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Mrs. Knight, will you please read resolution R66 2020? Resolution number R66 2020, a resolution to urge the governor of the state of Ohio and the Ohio legislature to extend the deadline for operating public meetings electronically and declaring an emergency. The current deadline would end on December 1, 2020, first reading. House Council wish to act? Move to suspend. Second. It's been moved to suspend the three reading rule by Mr. Schilling, seconded by Mr. Twilliger. Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Mr. Allen? No. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Three reading rule has been suspended. How does council wish to act? Move to adopt. Second. We move to adopt the resolution by Mr. Phillips, seconded by Mr. Schilling. Any comments or questions before we take a vote? Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Mr. Allen? No. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Mrs. Knight, we please read the last resolution of the evening. Resolution R67-2020. Resolution number R67-2020. Resolution authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety to waive a captain fee for Troy Community Works for the rehabilitation project of 1-3 East Main Street, Troy, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. This would uh, waive the fee amount of $14,300 first reading. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. House Council wish to act. Move to suspend. Second. It's been moved to suspend the three reading rule by Mr. Schilling, seconded by Mr. Roselle. Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. C? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Move to adopt. adopt. Second. The three reading rule has been suspended. It's been moved to adopt the re resolution by Mr. Schwazer, seconded by Mr. Twist. Are there any final comments or questions on the item? Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Swazer? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Key? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mr. Twist? 
Yes. Resolution is adopted. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. That concludes our resolutions. We'll move to ordinances now. Mrs. Knight, will you please read ordinance 049-2020. Ordinance number 049-2020. An ordinance changing the zoning of parcel number D08-001930 in the city of Troy, Ohio. From the zoning classification of B3, Central Business District to 01, Office Residence District. This is the address of 121 West Franklin Street. This has been recommended by the Troy Planning Commission. It was a subject of a public hearing this evening and will be a subject of a committee review a week from tonight. Second reading. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Since there will be further discussion at the committee level, this will stand as the second reading. Mrs. Knight, we please read Ordinance 050-2020. Ordinance number 050-2020, an ordinance changing the zoning of parcel number D08001937 in the city of Troy, Ohio, in the zoning classification of D3 Central Business District to OR1 Office Residence District. This is the address of 25 South Plum Street, has been recommended by the Detroit Planning Commission. At a public hearing this evening, will be considered by committee a week from tonight, and this is the second reading. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Since there will be further discussion of this on the committee level, this will stand as the second reading. Mrs. Knight, will you please read Ordinance 051-2020? Ordinance number 051-2020. An ordinance changing the zoning of parcel number D08001940 in the city of Troy, Ohio, from the zoning classification of B3 Central Business District to OR1 Office Residence District. This is the address of 21 South Plum Street. This has been recommended by the Troy Planning Commission. This is the subject of a public hearing. This evening will be the subject of a committee review a week from tonight, and this is the second reading. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Since there will be committee discussion on this at a later time, this will stand as the second reading. Mrs. Knight, will you please read Ordinance 052-2020? Ordinance number 052-2020. An ordinance changed the zoning of parcel number D0825517 in the city of Troy, Ohio, from the zoning classification of M2, Light Industrial District, to the zoning classification of B3, Central Business District. This is located at 212 South Mulberry Street. It's owned by the City of Troy. The Troy Planning Commission has recommended approval, and there will be a public hearing on this rezoning at the next council meeting. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Since there will be a public hearing on this on December 7th, this will stand as the first reading. Mrs. Knight, will you please read Ordinance 053-2020? Ordinance number 053-2020. Ordinance repealing ordinance number 038-2019 and establishing salaries of certain employees of the city of Troy, Ohio. Uh, this is the ordinance to comply with the uh, minimum wage, and this is the first reading. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. How does council wish to move on the item? Move for suspension. Second. Second. It has been moved to suspend the three reading rule by Mr. Phillips, seconded by Mr. Schoen. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. The three year rule has been suspended. It's been moved by Mr. Twist to adopt the ordinance, seconded by Mr. Roselle. Are there any final comments or questions? Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Sneak? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Swayzer? Yes. Ordinance is adopted. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Mrs. Knight, will you please read the last ordinance of the evening? Ordinance 054-2020. Ordinance number 054-2020, ordinance to accept the application for the annexation of certain territory containing 2.446 acres, more or less, in Staunton Township to the city of Troy, Ohio. This is a small parcel by Miami Shores, and council had previously provided the initial approval. This is the first reading. Thank you, Mrs. Nighthouse Council. Wish to act. Move to suspend. Second. Second. It's been moved to suspend the three year rule by Mr. Roselle, seconded by Mr. Schwazer. Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Siegert? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. 
Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Swazer? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. The three reading rule has been suspended by, I'm sorry, the ordinance has been moved. The three reading rule has been suspended. The ordinance has been moved for adoption by Mr. Schwazer, seconded by Mr. Schilling. Any final comments or questions before we vote? Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Rosell? Yes. Mr. Twilliger? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Swazer? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mrs. Steen? Yes. Ordinance is adopted. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. That concludes our <laughs> ordinances for the evening. We move into communications and announcements. Mrs. Knight, are there any announcements? No, there are not. Thank you. Move on to public comments from officials. We begin with Mayor Rota. Just uh, can't believe we're already talking about that the next council meeting will be in December. That is just stunning to me. Um, just want to wish everybody happy Thanksgiving next week. And uh, then the tree lighting will take place the day after Thanksgiving. And those details are on the city website. And just wish everybody happy holidays. Thank you, Mayor. Director of Public Service and Safety, Mr. Tittert. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, following up on the uh, Thanksgiving comments, uh, again, as I mentioned last meeting, uh, that Thursday and Friday, the city offices are closed. That's the 26th and the 27th. However, refuse and recycling are collected on the regular day. Um, leaf pickup, uh, we are continuing. Uh, this week, we are in the fifth zone, which is the final zone for the first round. Uh, we will begin a second round uh, the week after Thanksgiving, since it's a short week next week. We'll just play a little cleanup from the first round. Uh, so that is ongoing. I anticipate that that will go until, uh, unless, I won't say until, unless the weather changes, because maybe we'll keep with the 60 degree weather. Um, and then uh, a reminder that um, next Monday night, it's not only a committee night, uh, but we do have a work session. That is the annual budget work session. We are wrapping the uh, recommendations up and hopefully we'll have that uh, sent to you digitally uh, either tomorrow or Wednesday morning. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty bare bones basic budget next year. Uh, we wanted to be conservative, um, but uh, again, we will have that meeting. Uh, it will be here uh, starting at six o'clock um, to uh, so that we can spread out uh, and have the run of the place. And um, that's all I have. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Titrington. Moving on to Director of Law, Mr. Kerber. I have nothing this evening. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Kerber. City Auditor, Mr. Friggy. Thank you, Mr. President. I have nothing at this time. Thank you, Mr. Friggy. Do any council members have any comments that they'd like to make this evening? Seeing none, are there any staff members in attendance that would like to make any comments? Are there any members of the general public that would like to make any comments? Please come forward, give your name and address, and take as much time as you wish to consume. Over the course of five months, 
um, is our food distribution that takes place for the end of the month. Shared Harvest provides the food for those distributions. And then we serve um, families based on their needs uh, in different places in Miami County. We do those food distributions at the end of the month so that people who have maybe used their, um, already used their pantry benefits locally or their SNAP Ed benefits are gone, or SNAP benefits, excuse me, are gone, they have something to get them over into the end of the month. You can see that we have already um, drastically exceeded our numbers from 2019. In fact, the month of uh, March alone, uh, we did more than we did in 2019. And then you can see again in April that we broke another record. So with these food distributions, you know, when we started, we were very excited in February to hit 300 households that we were able to assist. We felt like we were really making a difference and then COVID hit. And as you can see with those numbers and how significantly high they went, and we actually got a little pushback from some folks not wanting us to do the distributions. They were concerned that there would be some panic and some issues. We're very happy to say that each one of these distributions has gone very smoothly. We're very grateful to Upper Valley Career Center who's allowed us use of the parking lots, which has been instrumental because with this many vehicles lined up, we've had more than once that we were out on the roads and causing a lot of disturbance. And so this lot gives us the opportunity to kind of wrap people around and it gives us a better chance to serve them. Um, we are, we were stunned with some of these numbers and with the number of people who are waiting. We get there about eight o'clock for a 10 o'clock start and there's already maybe 50 cars in line waiting for this to happen. So it's definitely been something that there is a significant need in this community, especially with this pandemic, but it is something that is of concern. And as you can see now, our numbers are starting to trend up again. So we are actually expecting November to be a pretty severe um, situation. We're expecting a lot of folks again because coming into the winter time, there's just a lot more needs that seems to be out there. So we're planning actually for 1200 for this November, um, which is this coming Saturday. Mr. Phillips has also been a huge help through this. We do deliveries to seniors and to some homebound folks, Riverside um, patients, as well as people in some of the um, nursing facilities. And so we have multiple people that come to pick up boxes to then take out to the community to these folks and deliver them. So we're grateful to have had that opportunity and to be able to provide this. So the reason why we're here tonight is we just want to continue to increase awareness in our community surrounding this issue. I mean, you can see 15 point, almost 16% of the children in our county are struggling with food insecurity. Um, so we want to, we just want to increase, uh, continue to create awareness. These people do live in Troy, Ohio. They're coming from all parts of our county. Troy, Ohio is just specifically residents of Troy are drawing about a third of what we serve at the, the food pantry, you know, for the entire county, Troy is drawing about a third of the, of those. So um, Amy mentioned that we do have a food distribution this month. We are always needing volunteers. We've been very blessed to have great volunteers, but also to have the National Guard. Uh, the National Guard has um, really taught us a lot of things, but we are seeing numbers like we've never seen before. And so when the Guard leaves and those numbers continue, we're really going to need um, some hands from the community to help us to continue to provide this service. And so with that, a shout out to the Troy hockey team, who a few months ago came to volunteer the entire team. And we still have several of the young men who are coming each month because they just enjoy it so much. So it's been a really fun thing working with them as well. So if you have some time, we'd love to have you join us um, or even just help us spread the word so that we can serve as many people that need these resources as possible. Any questions? Amy, I have a question. How do people volunteer? Do they just show up? Do they call you? Sometimes. Um, we do have a sign up genius that we do put out um, and it's attached to, we use social media quite a bit. Um, both the OSU Extension and Health Partners Free Clinic does a lot of posting and we put the sign up genius on that um, to allow for people to sign up. Because we've learned so much, we used to just kind of do a free for all and hope that we had enough. We've learned from the uh, National Guard how to be a little bit more organized with all of that. And uh, we've also learned how to use our whistles really well. So, <laughs> so yeah, if you check, you can find the sign up sheet on there. The reason, another reason we like to do that is so we can give you, we have a couple different jobs, so you can choose which job you want to do. And then also we'll send you an email just to remind you with some additional information before you come and volunteer. So it just kind of helps us 
be a little more slick in our organization. I wondered if you just wanted everybody just to show up. Yeah. So. <laughs> Get a little time. No, because yes, we will never turn anyone away, but the sign of genius genius allows us so that if we are looking really low on Thursday, Amy and I know where to start begging. Like, you know, start going around and saying, please, she needs some help. So and this month we'll also have the um, health department will be out to um, give masks out to each household, which they did last month as well. So it's an opportunity to get masks in people's hands. We also, um, Health Partners Free Clinic became a site for the Ohio Department of Health. It's the first and only free clinic in Ohio that is working with Ohio Department of Health with flu shots. So we're actually gonna have a flu vaccine clinic at the food distribution, which is gonna be really fun. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But it's an opportunity, again, folks can literally stay in their cars. We take the information we need for the food, we take the information we need for the shots, they get stuck in the car, <laughs> they put the food in their car and they go. And so it's a great way for people not to have a lot of contact and be able to get their needs met. Yeah, well, and those, those resources have always been very well received too. So as you're talking with people in the community, if they have a resource like that, and it's something we could share with food distribution, please put them in contact with us. I think it was last year in November, Miami Smiles Dental Clinic came out and had flyers out. It was at um, your place in Piqua. <clears throat> that was the first time they had all their appointments filled in what did they say, like several yeah, years yeah. because of that distribution and they're still continuing to have those appointments, um, you know, filled at a higher rate than before. So yeah, if, if there's, you know, if you hear of someone with a resource like that that would benefit people that are dealing with food insecurity or poverty, please send them to us. We'd love to help, you know, help them make that connection. Any other comments or questions? Thank you, Amy. Thank you. It was good to see you again. Anyone else have anything that they would like to address council about this evening? Bill, I have one more thing. Um, one of our fire department apprentices just came on board as a full-time firefighter. So just congratulations to Zane Drake. Uh, is he the first apprentice that we've hired full-time? No, he's the first. Who? He's the first son of a city employer. <laughs> True. But congratulations to Zane. All right. Anyone else? Well, seeing none, thank you all for being here this evening. It was good to see a good, good attendance for one of our meetings. Our next meeting will be December 7th at 7 p.m. This meeting stands adjourned. Thank you.